Our dear viewers and listeners, we greet you all in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. As we open up today's Bible study, let's dedicate this moment to God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We celebrate the reading of your word and the hearing of your word. For you say in your word that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. We thank you, Lord King of glory, because we are forever changed by your word. Even this day, glorify yourself through your word. Yes, that as we speak your word, King of glory, it comes with power, simplicity, and clarity, an understanding king of glory. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. So our dear viewers, uh, where we broke off last week, we were looking at the two witnesses and their ministry in the end time. Now for many of us, we have heard about these two witnesses. And I ended up on the note of whereby many of us have come to a point in life where there has been so much confusion about who these two witnesses are and trying to identify who they actually will be. Several thoughts have come through and I've we emphasized that last week that in trying to unearth their identity we stand the danger of being microscopic in our, in our approach and fail to be telescopic in our approach of life. And bring them to reality. You see, microscopes in life look at tiny things and then magnify them to such great extent that they can be visible to the naked eye. That is why they are able to look at parasites and those small microbes and bring them to our attention. Now, whereas that is good in the medical field, when it comes to the biblical approach, they are the things that we call the intangibles. There are things that we need to get hold of. The fundamentals of faith. And those are the things that we need to focus on. And yet there are others that are minute. For example, interpretation of several things. For example, when Jesus comes, Will the church be raptured before or after the or during the tribulation period? Now we have here today what is the identity of the witnesses? What will be their names? And the Bible does not give us the names. So, my take on this is that where the Bible does not give us names, we should not spend so much time trying to identify what the Bible has left hidden. Instead, our mandate should be on what is important. We need to remember 
tujukire fenna that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ kuno kwe kubikuliwa okwa Yesu Christ so much attention should be given to the person of Jesus Christ esira yonna tuliteke kubuntu Yesu Kristo and what our mandate is on earth ne katalali afe wano kunsi in light of his coming again ngatwetegekera okudda kwe Praise be to God. So back to the text that we saw. I want us to pick it up. From the third verse. And the Bible tells us. Bible wait we to gamba. And I will give power to my two witnesses. And they will prophesy. 1260 days. clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees. And the two lampstands. Standing before the god of the earth and if anyone wants to harm them fire proceeds from their mouth and devours their enemies and if anyone wants to harm them he must be killed in this manner these have the power to shut the heaven so that they so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy they have power of the, over the waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues as often as they desire when they finish their testimony the beast that are sent out of the bottomless pit will make war against them and en, overcome them and kill them and their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt where also our lord was crucified then those from the peoples era okuva mu bantu bonna tribes tongues ebika ne nimi and nations we see their dead bodies three and a half days na mawanga bali labe mirambo jabwe olwenna ku satu ne kitundu and not allow their dead bodies to be put into graves e bali ganya mirambo jabwe okuzikibwa mu ntana and those who dwell on the earth na aba babera ku nsi we rejoice bali sanyuka nyo over them kulwabwe and make merry and send gifts to one another because these two prophets who tormented those who dwell on the earth now after three and a half days the breath of life from God entered them they stood on their feet and a great fear fell upon those who saw them and they heard a loud voice from heaven saying come up here and they ascended to heaven in a cloud and their enemies saw them in the same hour there was a great earthquake and a tenth of the city fell in the earthquake 7,000 people were killed and the rest were afraid and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second war is past. Behold, the third is coming quickly. In the text that we just read, we see the testimony of these two witnesses. We told you before that we believe that these are two people that come out or that God raises in the end time with a special message to the nation of Israel and with the, to the people that will dwell upon the earth 
during this time? Why two witnesses? God calls them my two witnesses. And this is very informative for us. Because we see that throughout every generation, through the best of times, and the worst of times, God has always raised up a witness. In ages of wisdom and expression, in moments of darkness, and moments of despair, we still see God bring forth witnesses. Witnesses of his grace and love and mercy. We see that before the flood, Enoch and Noah were raised up as witnesses. Even in the times of Israel's apostasy, God raised up Elijah and Elisha as his witnesses. When it came to the salvation of mankind, we see John the Baptist and Jesus Christ come forth to bring us the good news of the salvation that is by faith in Christ Jesus. So the times that we are living in, the book of Acts tells us when the, when the disciples of Jesus wanted to know whether this was the time when he would bring the kingdom of Israel to freedom from the Romans. Jesus told them it's not for you to know the time. Another, your mandate is not to concern yourself about this time. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem throughout all Judea and Samaria, Samaria and the utmost parts of the earth. Basically what Jesus was pointing out that the focus the telescope should be on being witnesses. Witnessing about him to the uttermost parts of the earth. So in the time that we are still alive on earth, we have a duty to testify of Jesus to witness of his love, his grace, his mercy and his salvation to mankind. Now I need to point out two things here. One is the word witness. Now, witness is the nature. We are witnesses. And then what we do is to testify. So the result of the testimony that we give is what points to the one that we are witnessing about. Basically, what we testify about points the world to who we are witnesses of. And that should be very clear. So what that means, our message and our lives should point people, should point the nations, should point everyone to the one that we are witnessing of. So the question I ask you, is are you a witness of Jesus Christ? Is what you declare and the life that you live pointing the people to Jesus Christ? That is the question I leave with you.
Because Jesus says, you shall be my witnesses. And even in these times of the end time, we see him raise up two witnesses. And he says, there are my two witnesses. And they shall testify. He says, I will give them power. And they will prophesy 1,260 days clothed in sackcloth. They have a peculiar fashion statement. They come out in an era when sackcloth is not what you would put on. If you consider today and you see somebody walking in sackcloth that would be quite a statement that they would get the attention of anybody who is looking at them but imagine the in times and here are two people clothes in sackcloth why sackcloth may ask because to the Jew sackcloth signifies a time of repentance. And I believe this rhymes with the message that they will be preaching. Calling the nations to turn back to God. Calling the nations to turn back to Jesus as the Savior, as the hope, and as the Redeemer. But we understand from the scripture that this message will not go well with the people. They will not receive this message. And they will come against these people. But the Bible tells us that when they come against these people, fire will come out of their mouth and will devour their enemies. That is unlike anything we see today. This will happen literally. And how will this be possible? It will be possible because of what the word of God says in verse 4. Jesus says that there are the two olive trees. And the two lampstands standing before God, the e, God of the earth. Now, to the Jews, e, this is something that clicks instantly with them. Because it takes them back to the book of Zechariah. And in Zechariah chapter 4, e sule yokuna, and verse 2, we see Zachariah standing and the word of God comes to him. And here we see him, him quoting that he said to me, what do you see? And Zachariah responds and says, I am looking and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it and on the stand seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps and two olive trees are by it one to the right and one to the left and so I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me saying what are these my lord then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me do you not know what these are and I said, no, my Lord. And he answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O oh great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. He shall bring forth the capstone. 
with shouts of grace. Grace to it. Now, for you to understand what is being said here, I will paint the picture for you. This was at the time when the children of Israel were coming from captivity with a mandate to build the temple. They were being led by two people. One of them was called Joshua. And the other was called Zerubbabel. Joshua was the political head. And Zerubbabel was the prophet. So when they come, to gather the people to build the temple. These were trying times in which they were trying to rebuild the temple of God. To turn the nation back to the worshipping of the true God. And the circumstances were so adverse to them that it was not humanly possible for them to be able to accomplish this task. So then God sends the word to Zechariah. It is here that he receives this vision. And in this vision he sees the lampstand that has the seven lamps. And in those days they used olive oil to be able to light their lamps. Now this olive oil was extracted from olive trees. So the picture that Zachariah is seeing is of a lampstand with seven lamps but they are piped not to the olive oil but they are piped to the olive trees in other words the oil is coming directly from the trees to the lampstand to give oil to the lamp now what is the implication of this? Here the Lord speaks to Zechariah and tells him I want you to go to Zerubbabel and tell him that you shall accomplish this task of building the temple not by your might not by your power but by my spirit says the Lord in other words this shall be accomplished by the power of the Holy Spirit and what the piped trees was the symbol of the Holy Spirit or the oil that will cause the light to come to the lampstand. And it says the mountain before them shall be leveled by speaking grace to the mountain. Now, the Application of this to the text that we just read. When God talks about the two witnesses, He refers to them as His lampstand and He calls them His olive trees. The implication of this is that their ministry shall be a ministry that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. They shall go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit and they shall be able to accomplish and testify of the Lord based on the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Now this excites you and I that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ because we 
have the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside of us. And he is not there just to make us excited. He's not there just to help us to be able to speak in tongues. He's here to make us witnesses so that we testify of Christ by the life that we live and by the message that we proclaim. You see, the Holy Spirit is not someone that we just plug into and plug out. Like when you need electricity, you plug into electricity and are able to do whatever you want to do. And after you are done, then you plug out. Ah, it doesn't happen that way. He comes in our lives. And every moment of your life, you have him resident in you. Testifying that you are the child of God. Empowering you to testify for Christ. Empowering you to live a holy life. Giving you the grace to overcome the mountains that come your way. Providing and guiding for you every step of the way. Ordering your steps. For the Bible tells us that the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. So this makes every believer in Jesus Christ to be conscious that God is dwelling in you. And this God that dwells in us is the God that we not only be conscious about but we should also order our lives in obedience to his dictates. That is when we become true witnesses and effective witnesses in this world. Praise be to God. The Bible goes on to tell us that concerning these witnesses as they go forth they fulfill their ministry. And in verse 7, the Bible testifies that when they had completed their testimony, the word complete or the word finish is the Greek word teleo which gives a sense of accomplishment or to make complete. But it is in the perfect tense. So in this case, it is looking at their work as accomplished but with continuing results. This is how the Bible explains that at the end of their testimony, then the beast who comes out of the earth, whom we will see in detail in chapter 16, chapter 17, and chapter 18, who is the Antichrist? He comes and wages war against these two witnesses. And he overcomes them. And he kills them. And as a result of this, the Bible tells us there is celebration all over the world. People are buying gifts and sending gifts to one another. It is like a Christmas or a New Year event. And people are celebrating. All the news of the world have a breaking news caption that the two witnesses who to prophesy to them have now been overcome by the Antichrist. 
And this celebration goes on and on. We see an event that is unbecoming to a civilized world. The, the Bible tells us that they were left on earth. They were not buried. They were left there. Or they will be left there. For three and a half days. They want to see them rot. The Antichrist wants to make them an example. To everyone. That this is what happens to you when you come against me. He has now enthroned himself as the omnipotent one. He has now entrenched himself in the temple as the abomination that causes desolation. He has now Declare to everyone openly that he is God. And as the people celebrate this achievement for three and a half days, everyone is looking at what is happening. And then the Bible says Bible this is happening in the place Chino chiri mchifo, where Jesus Yesu, was killed. We are he calls it spiritually Sodom and Egypt. And this is where some people have had a misinterpretation of what this place is. Some scholars erroneously think that this is Babylon. Yes, it is true that Babylon will be rebuilt. And we will see that in the subsequent chapters. And it will be the seat or the capital of the Antichrist. But here the Bible goes further to tell us that this is the place where the Lord Jesus was killed. So it is unmistaken. Jesus, our Lord, was crucified in Jerusalem. So it is in Jerusalem that all Focus will be at this time. So why does the Bible call it spiritually Sodom and Egypt? Because now that the Antichrist has gained ascendancy, wickedness and immorality will prosper. Which is likened to Sodom. Secondly, there will be oppression. There will be slavery. Men will be enslaved in their minds. Men will be enslaved by the flesh. And this is the picture of Egypt. Remember, this is the message to Israel. And to them, Sodom. And Egypt will be representing wickedness and oppression, respectively. So, in this time, in this moment, why all peoples of the world will be celebrating? Why all times of the world will be celebrating? The Bible says, the breath of God or the breath of life from God will enter these two witnesses. And they will stand on their feet. Now I want you to note something here. 
The Bible says the breath of life from God. The key point I want us to understand here is life comes from God. And this is a fact that is many times overlooked. You see, many times today, we think death is the end of everything. To the non believer, yes. But to the believer in Jesus Christ, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me shall not die. In the same chapter, he Say Anyone who believes in me, though they die, yet shall they live. In Christ Jesus, we receive life. We receive the Zoe kind of life, the God kind of life. The life that has no end. And that is very important to you, the believer in Jesus Christ. Because once you understand that you have the life of God in you, then the fear of death goes out of the window. You see, the fear of death hinders us from being effective witnesses for Christ. If this life is all there is, then you are a miserable creature. But we have this that we have the life of God flowing through us. And this is what the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews. It says for as much as we are flesh and blood. The Bible tells us that he himself partook of the same. That he may destroy him who had power over death. And that is the devil. Yes, And free those who through the fear of death were subject to bondage. You see, the fear of death holds your bondage. You are not able to express yourself in the spirit. You are not able to be an effective witness for Christ. And here in this scripture, the Bible paints it before us concerning these two witnesses. Three and a half days after the world was celebrating that their tormentors had come to an end. The Bible tells us that life comes from God and enters into this tomb. And they stand up on their feet. The message is here. Life did not begin with the big bang. Life did not come with some sort of explosion that moved on through many cycles and then we became apes. And then finally we see human beings come. Life came when God breathed into the clay in Genesis chapter 2. And the account tells us and man became a living being. It is God that is the author of life. And when we fail to understand that, we see all these inhuman acts coming to fruition. We see violence. 
Tulabo kutulugunyi zibwa. We see euthanasia. Tulabo kutabu abantu nga tebanda bako fa. We see abortions come. Tulabo abantu nga bajamu embuto. We see people killing one another. Nga abantu batingana. Without any sense of life. Nga tebali na anti iso bo kusechitibwa mubulamu. All that is an example of what happens when people don't understand this fact. That God is the source of life. And the Bible says when these two witnesses stood up, all the nations saw them and great fear fell upon them. Think about it. When John was writing this, it was inconceivable that all the nations of the world would be seeing this event in real time. But with the advancements in technology, we now see, we now know that this can happen. And this will happen. And all the nations will be glued to their social media. Will be glued to TV. And they will be seeing this event as it happened. And the Bible says, <laughs> Bible the result of this will be fear. Why fear? Because now they understand that death is not the end. Why fear? Because they now understand that everything they had placed their hope in is not the ultimate. There is one who is greater. There is one who has the final amen. There is one who has the final say in every matter. There is the one who declares that I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The one whom the book of Revelation reveals. Who tells John, Behold, I have the keys of God. Death and Hades. The one who was dead and is now alive. And he is alive forevermore. And his name is Jesus. The question I put to you today Have you placed your faith? In this Jesus Christ. You see. The second thing that we see here is that whether in death or in life, the testimony of God will still stand. God will still use the setbacks of life. God will still use the difficult situations that we encounter to achieve his purposes and to ensure that his name is glorified. So where does that place us? We continue to see in the text that the Bible says that a loud voice was heard would be heard from heaven saying come up here and they will ascend to heaven in a cloud. This won't be like the rapture. It won't be like a twinkling of an eye and then they go. Their ascension will be slow. So that it is captured. And everyone can see them. That those who were dead, three and a half days, have now risen 
Kati vama ze bazuki doku vama fu. And they are ascending. Ngeraba ambuka waguru. As the whole world watches. Ngeensiyo neba laba. Until they disappear in the cloud. Paka ya babu lida mchide. Like their Lord and Savior whom they testified about. Ngamu kama wawe Yesu Christo gweba ajuli lako. Did rise and disappear. Ngawe ya yambu kanabu lida mchide. As we have the witness in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1. Ngatu inebi ya wadiku ya mchikumubitabo chebi kola vya batu mesule soka. Now. Kakano, the impact of this the Bible says that in the same hour as there was a great earthquake and the tenth of the city of Jerusalem fell and in that earthquake 7,000 people were killed and the rest that were around them Era abawona, were afraid ne entisa, and gave glory to the God of heaven. We guru ne we chitiwa, ne now this is an idiom chino chigambo chino. that is used when the Bible says and they gave glory to the God of heaven they are saying and they believed in God and they trusted in God we see that as a result of these events in the end Men gave their lives to Jesus Christ. There were thousands of people that were saved as Christians. Well. Now, you are asking, how, where do you get that from, Pastor? I will just take you a few chapters back. And we will look at chapter 7. Where the Bible gives us an account of the multitude that will come from the great tribulation. The Bible says, and John is testifying, says after these things, I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all the nations tribes, peoples and times standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice saying salvation belongs unto our God who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb all the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God saying Amen Blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered saying to me, John is saying, who are these arrayed in white robes and where did they come from? Now listen to the question, who are these? And where did they come from? And I say to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones that come out of the great tribulation. I want you to take note of the period. These are the ones that come out of the great tribulation. And they washed their robes. And they made them white. With the blood of the Lamb. These are the ones that are being referred to. In the book, in chapter 11. 
I told you the last time round that the book of Revelation is not chronological. No, there are certain chapters that overlap. And this is the understanding. Because when John got this revelation, what he was seeing, he was seeing from a standpoint of eternity. And he was looking back in time. Now he's relating to us events as he sees them occur. But this is not in a chronological order. But I want us to focus on the impact of the ministry of these two witnesses. The Bible records that thousands upon thousands come out of this great tribulation and are washed with the blood of the Lamb because of the witness of two men. Where does that put you and me? The millions that confess. The millions that declare that they are witnesses of Christ. What is that message to us? The message to us, I believe, is that in spite of the difficulties that we are living in, we have an opportunity and this opportunity is to be faithful in executing our assignments on earth until the very end. That is when our testimony will have an impact not only in our lifetime but in the time that will come even after we have left. That we will have to stand and be faithful to our calling and endure in the face of temptation. That we will face our fears looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. The one that we testify about. The one whom our lives should bear testimony of. Does that define you? Or not? You see, in this text that we read, it brings out two personalities. There are those when John was told to measure the temple. He was told to measure the temple and those who worship therein. And there are those that were trampling upon the temple. Two groups of people. We we see another set of people of the witnesses and those who rejoice at the death of the witnesses. In the same way, there is no neutral ground. Your life will either testify of the Lord Jesus or you will testify to somebody else or something else. You have a choice to make. But I will give you the better one is to surrender your life to Jesus and rededicate your life to testify of him faithfully until the end. If you have never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is where it begins to trust in his finished work. 
Repent of your sins and receive the forgiveness that He freely gives. Then the Holy Spirit will come and make His way in your life. And He will guide you. And He will lead you. And your life will then testify of Jesus faithfully until the end. So if you have never received Jesus, make this prayer. Say, dear Lord, I am a sinner in need of saving. Lord Jesus, you are the Savior of the world. Today, I place my life in you. I place my trust in you. I ask you, Lord, but from this day forward, you become the Lord and the Savior of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lead and guide me according to the assignment that you have programmed for me since the beginning of the time. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Let me pray with you. And for those that have not found their purpose in life. And for those that have not been faithful in the assignment on life. It's not too late. Right now. You can find that sense of purpose. Father in the name of Jesus. I thank you. For this day. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the illumination of your word. By your Holy Spirit, I pray. Illuminate our hearts. Bring us to the point of realization of what we need to do. And the fact that our lives need to testify of God's faithfulness. That our lives need to point others to Christ. Help Help us, Lord, from this day forward to live with that understanding and to walk in that direction that many will be drawn to you that many will be saved and many will be redeemed from destruction. Empower us, Lord, for this time and season that our lives will bring you glory, honor and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you have been blessed, there is that number on your screen. Please reach out. Testify of God's goodness. Testify of God's love. Testify of what God has done in your life. And God richly bless you. So till we meet again from Dominion Church. Shalom.